Okay, so we're back from being out. We were out in the wild. We like to call it the wild. We were out in the wild for eight weeks. And during that eight weeks, we kind of uh, discovered a few things that were small issues or things that we just wish we had. And so we compiled a list and we've been chopping away at the list. Um, try to get all these things tidied up before we head south. So I'm gonna bring you up to date on what we got done and show you what I still have left to do. So one of the items on the list that hasn't been a big argument between us, but from the get-go, I wanted two televisions in the bus. And the reason I wanted that was if she wanted to watch one program and me another one, we didn't have to struggle with who could do which and or share a TV. And it gave us the ability to have a way to get a to get away from each other. So we have added another TV back here. It's a smart TV and it's on a swivel. So we can swivel it out into the room and adjust it to the way we want it. And when we're done watching it, it'll fold right up to the wall. So it is a smart TV in the way that our cellular plan is. Um, if we have enough hotspot, we can actually hotspot to this TV and use it with the Wi-Fi thing, I think you would call it. Um, we also bought a portable DVD player to put back here so we can watch DVs directly to this. And we'll have the phone adapter for our phones so we can plug right in and play off of our phone without using the hotspot. So we have that up on the other TV and uh, that's all, that's been something that's worked great. Hey video lady. Hi. Hi YouTube. So this is the way that we plug in and with the HDMI cable that's the charger for the phone and then this is the lightning plug-in for the iPhone. And so we can plug in and whatever's on your phone is on the TV and you're not using the hotspot. So that job is done. Another thing that we've been dealing with is, and we've gotten a lot of comments on this, what do we do with the back steps when they're not using them? Like when we travel down the road and we've been putting them in the bedroom on the floor. But now it's become quite obvious that out on the road, having to put the steps on the floor, alleviate, it makes it so you can't just pull into a rest area and drop the bed and spend six or eight hours and then move on. So basically, we're just not gonna take the steps with us. So for now, the steps are gonna stay here. And uh, this back door is actually, we can still pass stuff through it, but it will pretty much be a cargo in and out and a, emergency exit if we had to because it's not so high you can't just jump out so another thing that was a problem was uh, the water fill spout that was working the fresh water for the water the drinking water fresh water in the spout that we filled that up with was a plastic rv thing that we bought and uh, the o-ring came off of it and it's pretty obvious that it wasn't going to last a long time so I replaced that with a new stainless steel version with a screw on top. Okay guys, today I'm working on this water inlet. So I found this on Amazon. It's really pretty dang nice. Stainless steel to replace the plastic one that's kind of fallen apart already. Uh, the problem is that this is for inch and a half hose and I have inch and a quarter hose, so what I'm going to do, I think, is try to machine this so I can just slip this adapter in there. And I think if I go just uh, shorten this up a little bit and take these spots off, this might just be a press fit right into that tube. Okay, so I basically shaved that off with the lathe, and I cut that off and deburred it on the inside so I think I got a pretty good press fit here. I can just press that in with the uh, arbor press.
Okay, I'm gonna see if I can get this old one removed. Okay, people, I've elicited the aid of my personal assistant. So what the problem is, is I can't reach these and be on the inside, so oh, okay. you have to hold this up as you put it up like this. I can get that. You can hold those like that. Gotcha. The front one first. Okay. There we go. Okay, guys. I basically got the old one. So that's how I had the old one in there. These pop rivets actually weren't holding nothing. They just filled the holes. And they were just right in those corners. They were barely holding on too. <laughs> so anyhow, we're gonna replace this with this. So the problem with this one is it's pretty flimsy. And uh, the O-ring that was in here has already failed. And the, going down the road, even with this flipped, um, it wouldn't stay shut all the time. So anyhow, oh, I see there's just a little tab up there that holds that in. But anyhow, we're going to replace it with that new one that I've got mocked up. And I think it'll be a big improvement once I get through. I'm just going to have to make some type of an adapter to cover that hole. Right there is where that needs to set to line up. I just have it stuck into the hose so I can get the alignment. I didn't push it all the way in yet. So I, all I gotta do is just make a pattern for a cover plate. And then the cover plate can actually hook onto the bus and this thing will actually be able to fasten to something solid then. So I think I'll make it out of this uh, tread plate, aluminum tread plate with the shiny finish so that it matches uh, the doors and some of the other stuff. Are you locking it in place? <sighs> yeah, that's one of those things. It always seems like a simple little thing, but task to be completed. <laughs> I just need to reconnect this hose. Just need a zip tie for that hose and then we're done. Oh, look at that, you guys. Wow. So when you want to get in, you just flip that up and unscrew it. And stick your hose in there. We've got a skinny little hose that snakes right in there. Yeah, I thought it's going to be nice. That is another job checked off of our list, huh? <sighs> yeah, I just need them zip ties. Okay, I'll go I'll get some for you. This. Okay, another issue that we had come up when we were out in the wild <laughs> was <laughs> the granddaughter slipped on the front steps and that was a simple fix with some grip tapes. So it's still hot, it's hot in here. So since it's warmed up, it's probably 100 degrees outside is my guess was supposed to cool down but anyhow I'm gonna do some stuff inside and one of the things that we we uh, encountered when we were up with the kids is one of my granddaughters came down the steps straight with her feet forward that stainless steel strip was slick and her foot slipped forward and she slid right into the door and lucky she didn't get hurt so for Avery I'm gonna cut this stuff into strips they had it in rolls, but it was, we didn't like the, didn't look quite as grippy and it, anyhow, I'm going to cut it in two inch strips and stick it on there and roll it over the edge a little bit. I know it's going to wear with time, but I'd rather have the task of replacing it than having somebody slip and get hurt, so. That's what I'm going to do. Easy. 
So another thing on our list, an easy check off, huh? Yeah. Ooh. They can't see it on camera, but there's a break on that metal right there that I'm following, so. So you can get the stripes somewhat straight? There's a bend right uh -huh. there, see? Uh-huh. And then it just gives enough that it'll roll over. Oh, and he's so good. <laughs> he's hot. Oh, he's so hot. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Guys, it's like 100 plus degrees here. All right, so all I had to do, I just washed those down with lacquer thinner to get them clean. And the cool thing is, if I ever have to remove it, I can take them off, use the heat gun to get them warm, take them off, scrub them down with acetone, put them back, put new ones on. So I know it'll be an ongoing maintenance, but wow, that's that's going to be a, a huge, huge safety a huge improvement. improvement so. so back here in the bathroom, instead of having the plastic tote for the towels and the toilet paper and the cleaner and such. I wanted to make a wooden one, which I have partially completed. So here is that. I need to put some plugs in the screw holes and sand it and round the edges and varnish it. But anyhow, this will just be, uh, fits the spot better and it'll look a lot nicer once it's completed. So that's a work in progress. Another thing that was quite annoying um, with the pickup is a lot of the cargo and stuff that we tried to put in there or haul in there. Even though I bought the factory tie downs for the inside of the bed, they're never in the right place for what we needed to put in there. And we've added uh, an axe and a shovel for when we're out in the woods. If there's a fire or something, we have a way to help fight a fire or dig us out if we get stuck. So I added some uh, tie down anchors in the back of the pickup. I'll show you those. Okay guys, so here's Olivia the pickup. And uh, there you can see where I got the shovel mounted in there. But I put extra anchors so basically, I went to Harbor Freight and I bought one of those, I think they call them E-Tracks. And with the E-Track, with the E-Tracks I took and I cut them into pieces. So you can actually buy those as individual anchors like they are, but they have a round rim around them and they were way too big and they wouldn't fit. So I opted to just buy the strip and I just put it in the bandsaw and cut them into short lengths and pop riveted them in here. And so now I got my ax and my shovel anchored in over there and I just pull the bungee cord and pull that pin out of the connector there and I can have easy access to those. The uh, generator typically sets right here and this tie down was right in the middle of the generator so I've got one for in front and I got multiples for the back side of the generator and if you're wondering there's the connector that I got from Harbor Freight but this track was so popular but anyhow you you pull this tongue and slip it up and then drop the back in and now you got your tie down I, I got these off of amazon because i literally couldn't buy those at harbor freight so this is the amazon version you pull that thing up out of the way push it up drop it down and you're clipped in and when you not don't need them you reverse the procedure and you don't have these things rattling around in the back of the truck. So if you look up there behind the tote, you can see I threw two more up there in the front and then the one in the center and these one on these ones on the back end are, um, I think they're gonna work out good. And you can also get a connector that uh, that's what the shovel is in, but I modified it. 
there's this type of connector, which again, you pull this, slip it up, drop it in, and then you can put a two by four across here or up there where, where I have the other ones, I could put a two by four divider if I chose to need that. So what I did is I took this connector and I just cut this section out so, so that the ax and the handle of the shovel could fit in there. So I think that's going to solve the issues we've had with anchor points for tying things down. <clears throat> no, these are not something you can hook onto and use as an anchor to tow something out. They're just for tying cargo in. Stainless steel pop rivets into aluminum. You know, they're going to hold, but they're not going to take a super load. You would just rip them out because this whole bed is aluminum. <clears throat> But I think that's going to work quite nicely. Okay, guys, bringing you up to speed. A couple of more things. We put in smoke detectors. They're actually a smoke detector or CO detector combination that we picked up at Costco. We put the fire extinguisher here up in the front. And... We're gonna have the propane detector. It just simply plugs into the wall, so that's gonna be a super easy task. That's my kind of thing to check off the list. We had to repair the Wii Boost, which just needed a, a new cable and a connector back there, so we got that tidied up. I think we're getting it, YouTube. We're getting so close, uh, so, so close. Oh, I know, I was gonna show off the steps. So the other, another problem is that the steps that we had when you came out of the bus, they were pretty skinny. Uh, we loved the step, but it's now twice as wide as it was, thanks to Chris. Oof. I was going to go in and, and just pop ribbit these things together. So basically what I did is I just bought... I just bought a whole nother step. So now it's twice as wide. And uh, so I know it might seem confusing with all these legs on here. But basically now that's just spare parts. So if I have any problem with the other legs or the locks or whatever, I got spare parts there. And uh, I've got this. Basically now we don't have to worry about uh, missing the step when we come out of the bus, which, and it has that center, that center leg support. So it is sturdy. And I was just gonna go put some metal and pop rivet it together, but Chris welded that thing. And man, it is awesome. Of course, we covered all the weld up here in the middle, but we, he welded it and then I pop riveted it on both sides. So there you go, the bottom. So I did clean off the powder coat so Chris could weld it. And then I added the pop rivets to the outer edges because that metal is so thin. Because those the legs on that are individually adjustable, if we're on if we're on uneven terrain, I can adjust each leg individually to meet the terrain. I just think that's going to work out super awesome. And Chris did an awesome job of welding it for me. I'm so grateful. Thank you, Chris. Oh, these are going to be awesome, you guys. This is going to work really well. Way to go, babe. Hey, wait a minute, you talking to me or to Chris? <laughs> you, you're my babe, my honey, my sugar pie. <laughs> so guys, I know these may seem like little things to you guys, but in the bus world, um, some of these things are really big items for us that we're so grateful to have off of our list. And we're just gonna keep um, pushing away at that list. We're got, we've got it tweaked down really, really short now so there's not too many items left on it 
But anyway, just know that we love sharing the journey with you all, and we will just catch you in the next video. Love to you all. Bye.